Hi, in this second part of the uh, uh, educational video for hernia, I'm going to talk about uh, indication for surgery. We're going to talk about the uh, different options, uh, how we repair the hernia. And then also at the end, we're going to talk about uh, the recovery time after the hernia surgery. So just to remind you from the first portion of this talk, hernia is a defect in the abdominal wall and usually people present with uh, signs and symptoms of bulge and um, pain, mostly during the activity and the straining. And as we said, there are different type of hernias and the most common ones are the ones that are showed in this diagram. You have in the groin area, two type of hernia, which is inguinal hernia and also femoral hernia. And then we have also on the abdominal wall, the most common ones are umbilical hernia, which is happens around the umbilicus. Or we have incisional hernia, which is a defect happens after any type of open operation with a large incision that create weakness of the abdominal wall and then people later develop different size of the hernia and we call them incisional hernia. The uh, way we fix these hernias are very, very different. There are different types and options of the surgery. But what is the indication to do the operation? As we talked about on the first portion of this talk, when the di indication for surgery is when you diagnose the hernia. If you have a hernia, you need to fix it. Whether patient has symptoms or no symptoms, this hernia needs to be fixed. And why is that? Because it's, hernia is very, very unpredictable. And some of the patients that can present with complication of the hernia, which is incarceration or a strangulation of the hernia, where part of the intestine or intra-abdominal content can get trapped inside the hernia and cause significant emergency, which at times can be life-threatening. For this purpose, we, as a surgeon, we recommend the patient to have surgery even if they don't have any signs or symptoms, unless the patient is extremely old, they have extreme uh, risk of surgery and going under anesthesia, and those people can be observed. Now, the um, type of surgeries, we separate the type of operation to two categories. One is an open operation, and the other one is a minimally invasive surgery. I wrote it like a MIS. Now, this minimally invasive surgery can be done with a robot, which is called robotic assisted, or it can be with laparoscope. Now let's talk about the open surgery. Open surgery involves making an incision on the top of the hernia, going through the skin, the soft tissue, and go over the top of the weakness of the muscle. So I look at the defect with my eyes and I see the hole, and then I push the contents of the abdomen that is incarcerated or trapped inside the hernia, push it back inside the abdomen in their place, and somehow we need to fix that, this hole. Now, in, if you have umbilical hernia or incisional hernia, what I can do is I can directly close them with a suture. So I close the defect primarily uh, with uh, strong sutures, and usually we use a non-absorbable suture to close the defect. But obviously, even the muscle in that area is a little weak, so if you bring the weak muscle together, they have a potential of hernia to come back. So one of the goal of hernia repair is to minimize the possibility of a recurrence of the hernia. So in that purpose, what we do is we use a, a special product is called mesh, which usually is a plastic material. And we place that mesh over the top of the repair or underneath of the repair. So there are different techniques, whether we put it on the top of the muscle or below the muscle. And what that does, it's a foreign body, it's an implant that does not absorb and it creates a foreign body reaction. So your body actually react to it and create a scar tissue. And those scar tissue grow into these little holes of this mesh 
as a foundation to develop a very thick tissue and that process of that tissue formation um, takes around six weeks and make a very very strong tissue and in, in fact um, your scar tissue incorporate that mesh into your muscle and that way make this area of the weak, weak muscles is stronger. So that's the whole concept of the hernia repair. So for the umbilical hernia and incisional hernia, you can directly close the muscle and place the mesh on the top or below the muscle to reinforce the closure. Now, in the groin area, we're usually unable to close the muscle directly. And the reason is there's significant amount of num number of, of uh, important structures in that area, the blood vessels, the nerves that go in in that area, that if you try to close that hole directly, number one, there's not much tissue to close, and number two, they have a potential of damaging those structures. So for the groin area, groin area, whether it's a femoral hernia or inguinal hernia, we uh, primarily use the mesh to essentially patch the hole close. So we don't close the hole with the sutures, we just place that plastic on top of it to patch the hole close. And again, by tissue formation, a scar tissue formation, this part will um, uh, grow into the muscle and eventually patch the hole close. Now, the concept for the minimally invasive surgery and robotic or laparoscopic operation is the same, is placing the plastic in mesh, whether closing directly primarily and putting the mesh or in the groin area directly um, putting the mesh without closing, you can perform that with using um, this technique. So essentially minimally invasive surgery is to is making a small incision, whether on the side of the abdomen or on the top of the abdomen, and usually um, placing the camera inside the abdomen through one of these holes to see the intra-abdominal structure. So now I'm inside the abdomen and I'm looking at the holes from the inside of the abdomen. And there's a layer that covers the muscle from the abdomen, normally we call it the peritoneum. That's a very uh, thin layer that covers the muscle. And we separate and open that layer and go behind the defect of the abdominal wall, the muscle, the muscle hole, and then I place that plastic right behind the muscle, and then I close that normal tissue of the patient, which is called peritoneum. So essentially, we bury the mesh under that normal tissue. So if I go back again into the abdomen, sometimes you can't even see the mesh because it's buried behind the muscle, but that way, but that way, again, you create a, um, a structure for your body to create um, a scar tissue and that will again grow into that plastic and be part of your muscle in the future. Now, what are the advantages of the robotic or laparoscopic surgery compared to the open? Essentially, when you do open surgery, obviously you have to create incision, go through the normal um, tissue, cut through the normal tissue in order to get to that hernia defect. So by doing that, you increase the trauma to the patient. So for the same reason, pain after the surgery and the swelling and inflammation is much um, higher. When we do minimally invasive surgery, whether with a robot or laparoscope, then we just make a smaller incision. So obviously we don't cut through the normal tissue of the body and by that way, you decrease the trauma through the abdominal wall. So. How does it translate to the recovery? It's very easy. Um, so we can talk about the recovery right now. Essentially, when I do robotic or laparoscopic surgery to repair these hernias, whether ventral or incisional hernia, umbilical hernia, or groin hernia, um, it's an outpatient procedures, and they usually get three to four holes, uh, depending on the type of the hernia. And then um, the operation takes between um, 45 minutes to one and a half hour, again, depending on how many hernias you have and the size of the hernia. And people go home, they have some discomfort and pain, especially in the incision area, uh, which usually takes around a few days. And then after a few days, majority of patients don't require a pain medication. They're still sore for a while, but they don't 
require pain medicine. They'd be able to walk, shower, and uh, do regular activity, but I do not want them to perform any heavy exercise or heavy lifting uh, for six weeks. Why I don't want them to do heavy exercise for six weeks is that because the, that process of uh, tissue formation uh, or ingrowth of your scar tissue into the mesh, it takes around six weeks. So by six weeks, that area of the weakness gets the fullest strength. So by that time, you uh, prevent the possibility of a recurrence. Unfortunately, when we do open surgery, the pain and swelling and discomfort is much higher. Obviously, they have um, a higher requirement for pain medication, and then they are more limited as far as doing the regular activities. And then they're going back to work and um, performing the regular activity is a little bit longer um, compared to the uh, uh, minimally invasive surgery. Uh, for uh, further information, please uh, visit my website at www.surgicaloasis.com or you may call my office at 949-646-8444 for uh, uh, appointment. Thank you.